Good morning and welcome. I'm Mother Kathy Heitman, and I'm the Associate Rector here at St. Peter's. I'm so happy to be with you on this beautiful Sunday morning for worship. The bulletin for today's service can be found on our website, stpetersmckinney.com, or in the comments. If you are joining us this morning for the first time, please reach out and say hello, either in the comments or by emailing us. All the clergy's emails are on our website. Now let's take a moment to find the bulletin and center our hearts before we begin. to say that we are reopening for indoor worship next Sunday, September 20th. We will have services at 9 and 11 here in the name. You will need to sign up beforehand. The link is in the comments. Starting next week, we will have one online service at 9 a.m. It will be a traditional service, and our outdoor services will continue as normal. This is your last chance to sign up for small groups, and I encourage you to do that. 
In regard to outreach, we have two more weeks of SAP Summer Hunger, and you can sign up to help with that. Now let's begin in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, this morning we remember 9-11. We remember all those who died on that day. We give you thanks for the promise and hope of the resurrection. We remember all those who mourn, especially this weekend on the anniversary of September 11. Holy and mighty God, we give thanks that even out of great evil, you pull that which is good. After the attacks of 9-11, we saw great compassion, wonderful unity. And we ask that you be with our nation now in the difficult times that we face, and that once again, through your might and power and love, you ignite compassion and unity once again. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 420, When in our music God is glorified.
The Lord be with you. And God also with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? Is it before their own Lord that they stand or fall? And they will be upheld. For the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds, those who observe the day, observing in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live in the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is hymn 400, verses 1 and 7, All Creatures of Our God and King. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and make payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. 
And his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. In our sermon series, Liturgies of Love, we've looked at how our experience of our liturgy has changed while we've been worshiping online. One of the most obvious changes has to do with singing. I have heard from some of you that you are singing the hymns when you worship in your living rooms and on your patios. I've heard from others of you that you're taking a pass on this singing. It's a challenge to sing the hymns without the support of the choir and the congregation. One woman told me it was easier to sing out when her voice was just one among 200 or more voices. Her voice could hide amidst all the other voices here at church. At home, there's no place for her to hide her voice. I think that our comfort level with singing the hymns has something to do with our singing confidence. In our online worship, We've lost the wonderful sense of community that comes from our individual voices blending together into one voice. We've also lost the energy that reverberates through the narthex, or through the nave, when we sing a well-loved hymn like, I am the bread of life. Every time we come to the refrain of that hymn, something happens here in the nave that is difficult to describe. It's transcendent. We sing, and I will raise him up, and I will raise him up, and I will raise him up on that last day. And lyrics, faith, voices, hope, and organ swirl together, and something happens. Perhaps we are brought a little closer to heaven, to our Lord, for a moment in time. We cannot reproduce that blending of faith and voice and hope and organ at home. Psalm 96 tells us, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Three times we are told to sing. Clearly, the psalmist believes that song is important to our worship of God. I agree. There's a power that lies in our hymns and our singing of them. Hymns have the power to strengthen and deepen our spiritual lives, our relationship with God. They also have the power to strengthen our bonds with one another, the bonds of our community here at St. Peter's, and the bonds that make us part of the communion of saints. Let's look at how this happens. Hymn lyrics give us the words to express our thoughts and feelings when we cannot find the words ourselves. 
at a burial service. We open our hymnals and return to Lord of all hopefulness. We sing, Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. We could have spent a lifetime searching for those words that so perfectly express our sadness, our need for comfort, and our hope. Music touches our emotion in ways that words alone cannot. We all know that. I have lost count of the number of times that someone has said to me after a service, I don't know why I was crying. The tears just started. That statement is usually followed by a reference to a hymn. The music gives us permission to let our hearts feel and overflow. I realize that secular music can be just as cathartic, but there's a difference. The difference between secular music tapping our emotions and hymnody tapping them is that hymns are offered to God. All that sorrow or despair or relief when tied to a hymn is a prayer. When you have difficulty praying, Try singing your prayers. Hymnody is deeply communal. When you sing the hymns that are part of our online worship, you are part of a community that is singing along with you. The clergy are here singing. Choir members are in their homes singing. Before the pandemic, I could always hear Nancy and Steve Powell joyfully singing in the front pew. Even now, I can almost hear them singing in their house, which is just a few blocks away from the church. St. Peter's worship is traditional. We sing hymns that have been loved and sung for decades and even centuries. The hymns we sing Unite us to those who now worship in heaven, but once worshipped here. When I sing, I want to walk as a child of the light, I know that Elsie Kadera sang that here many times. When I sing, let all mortal flesh keep silence, I know that Barry Beeson stood in the choir loft and sang. As we worship and sing here at St. Peter's and in our homes, Elsie and Barry worship and sing in heaven. In some wonderful yet inexplicable way, we remain united with them as we worship and sing. Their voices join with ours. If I were to give the same sermon each month, you would grow bored with it. If we were to sing, love divine, all loves excelling each month, I don't think you'd grow bored with it. The difference is this. Hymns are prayers. They're a way to talk to God. Listen to the first verse of love divine, all loves excelling. Love divine, all love's excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. It's a prayer. A prayer asking Jesus to dwell in our hearts. It's a prayer we can say again and again. I would like to suggest some ways we incorporate 
hymnody into our lives at home. Use the hymnal as a prayer book. Pray the lyrics of a hymn for grace at your dinner table. If you don't have a hymnal, trust me, you can find the lyrics online. We are part of the Anglican Communion, and we are blessed with some of the best choral programs in the world. YouTube has hymn recordings from the great English cathedrals. Listen to them while you make your lunch or dinner today. Parents, sing the simple Sunday school choruses with your kids. Do the hand motions with them. If you don't know the motions, make them up. It'll work. Amazon has CDs and digital downloads of the songs for as little as $4. Get out the old VBS CDs and listen to them in the car. And as the psalmist says, sing, sing, sing. Today we pray especially for Leslie, Michelle, Bill, Mike, Ron, Suzanne, Carol and family, Erlon and Ying Ni, Sharon, Blair, John, Elna, Jim, 
Judy, Kenny, Jen, Linda, April, Taylor, Edith, Brian, Buck, Philip, Janie, Bobby, Chris, Jessica, Fredo, Courtney, Lindsay, Ben, Christy, Will, Larry, Janet, Bonnie, Carla, Rick, Kenny, Charlene, Buzz, and family. We pray for everyone in the Western United States living in the presence of the fires and for the firefighters and all volunteers. For those who live in assisted living or long-term care and their families, especially Bill, Patty, Eileen, Sandy, Pat, Jerry, and Tricia. We pray for victims of COVID-19, their families, and all health care workers. We pray for students, teachers, and all who work in the schools. Today we pray for the repose of soul of Sarah. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We continue now with the birthday and anniversary prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these your servants on this their special day. Watch over them as they begin another year, and give them grace to keep the vows and the promises they have made. Bless us, God, them our birthday and make you. Strengthen them when they stand. Raise them up when they fall. Comfort them with the scourge of sorrow, and may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide in their hearts all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday to all those who are celebrating birthdays this week, and happy anniversary to all those who are celebrating anniversaries. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us offering and sacrifice to God. Remember, every Saturday morning, you can pick up communion at the church at 9.30 a.m. so you can receive with us on Sunday mornings. And we continue to bless your gifts on the altar every week. If you'd like to add to your offering, go to our website or text S.T. Peters McKinney to 73256. All things come up thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and life. You made us in your image and called
called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. of God for the people of God. Blessed Jesus, in union with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly my own parish and those worshiping there, 
I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of the eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn will be hymn 410, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.